some exciting football played so far and we've been commenting really that it's got off to a much better start than Italia 90 did. The World Cup finals took a lot of getting going last year. That's right, John. They, the players seem to be a little bit more relaxed and they seem to be expressing themselves more. Uh, as though they're there to kind of entertain the crowd, that obviously is very important. Uh, and, and obviously, they're, they're, not, they're not worried about the Brazilians and the Argentines. You know, the, the smaller clubs are doing that. Wonderful atmosphere here then, as the two sides take the field. The referee, you've got a glimpse of him there this evening, is somebody we know rather well in England as well. Senor Wright, the man who sent off one Paul Gascoigne in the World Cup Finals last year. Jose Roberto Wright from Brazil, a very experienced official, of course. And here is the Chilean lineup. It's unchanged, in fact, from the side which won 4 2 against Peru in the last match. There had been one change from the previous game when Margas uh, came into the team and he retains his place. Interesting that Rubio is still in the side at uh, wearing the number 11 shirt because he gave way to Yanet uh, halfway through the last match and Yanet had an outstanding match. He really did, but the, this is probably the right tactic. He's starting with the same lineup, and he's still got the option of being able to bring Yanis on as the coach. Here is Argentina's side, and this too unchanged from the side which beat Venezuela by three goals to nil. There had been talk that perhaps Latore might have been left out. He's been suffering from toothache apparently all week, but uh, the coach has decided to stick with him. So Latore wears the number 11 shirt. Alfio Basile opting here for continuity. Ruggieri is the Argentine captain. He is the man who steps forward here with Jaime Pizarro, the captain of Chile. And the referee looks as though he's given him a pretty good talking to. Yeah, well, obviously, and I, I think it's a good idea. Uh, he's letting them know that he's in charge and that he'll stand no messing. And he's saying to the two captains, you know, if I get at you and, and there's a player giving me a problem in your team, I'll tell you, you sort him out. So here we go then for Chile against Argentina. The crowd here full of anticipation. They're going to be roaring on their favourites. And what a time this is for Chilean football with Colo Colo having won the Libertadores Cup, the first Chilean side to do so only a few weeks ago. And now here are the national side with two victories behind them. Level at the top of Group A with Paraguay. But of course those five goals that Paraguay have just scored could have a significant bearing. It's definitely put the cat amongst the pigeons, John. Uh, and obviously, all these th these players have been watching the, the, that first game, and they were all well aware of what's gone on. Uh, so there's a little bit more pressure on them to do their job tonight. It'll be interesting to see if Chile's play, start and play the way they have done the last two matches. In the first 10, 15 minutes, they've played the ball forward, pushed forward, and hustled in the opponent's half, not letting the opponents get out in their own half. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see if they're prepared to do that tonight against a better team. All credit to their coach, Arturo Salah. He's not uh, a vastly experienced man. I mean, he's 41, which is quite young by coaching standards. Uh, but he's obviously got them wound up and in the right frame of mind. Yes, and he's well-tutored, uh, John. I think he spent a lot of time in England. I think he's travelled the world looking at coaching ideas and looking at different teams' tactical formation. And I know he did very well at Cola Cola. So really, although he's still virtually a young man for a coach, his record's good, John. It is indeed, and of course, uh, on the opposite side of the card, Alfio Basile took over from Carlo, Carlos Pilado after the World Cup Finals last year. And Argentina returned home without having won the trophy, without having retained it. And uh, Basile, too, has got a good record behind him. Argentina have not lost an international match since that World Cup Final. Yes, the record is it's good. I mean, they've, they've, they've played some good teams as well on their way through. Obviously, they've played those two games in England, where they've played England, and they've played Russia up at uh, Old Trafford, and they've also played against Brazil. So it hasn't been an easy ride. They haven't been, uh, how can I easy friendlies. There have been games that uh, they've had to work to get something out of. That's right. They've played six matches on the European tour, and uh, they drew two, uh, drew four and won two of them. They didn't yes. lose any. And, of course, they were victorious here against Venezuela, as everybody expected, by three goals to nil. It was a typical Argentine performance, that. Uh, perhaps a bit methodical at times, but uh, very, very impressive in patches. And uh, 
they got the result, and that's what Argentina all set out to do. Well, they are ultra-professional, Argentine, Argentina, uh, John. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll play with patience, they'll wait for their chances, they'll get their ball into Canigia, he'll run at people. Uh, Batistuta, who is uh, the, fairly new to the public, uh, but obviously in Argentina he's been doing his stuff and he's getting important goals. Uh, Latore coming through. He sits just behind those two, John. He, he plays like Maradona. He plays just behind the front two, picking up uh, loose balls, running up the defence, playing off Canigia, playing off Batistuta. And he, I mean, people say he's going to be as good as Maradona. Well, regular viewers on Argentina football here on Screen Sport this last season. We'll have seen some exciting football played, certainly better than the previous season. You know, sides like Newell's Old Boys and Boca Juniors uh, played some highly entertaining football this season. And certainly he, Latare, was one of the finds, and Batistuta was the other one of the season. We're underway then here in Santiago, Chile against Argentina. Argentina in the blue and white stripes, Chile red shirts, blue shorts. Cracking atmosphere, and this is the game that really matters. And if Argentina lose it, my goodness me, there'll be reverberations around that country, around Buenos Aires tonight. And here is that man that we were talking about, Batistuta. He was the one who laid it back initially. That's a right, was number 11, 7, Kanijia. And the ball refusing to go out of play for the moment, and so Chile come forward with Este. Both sides and both coaches sensibly sticking to the same formats and the same formulas in these early stages. Yes, John, and why not? I mean, it served them fairly well. Uh, they've both been fairly successful in, in the opening of this competition and in the friendlies before this competition. There's no need for them to change it. Well, it's all thrown for Argentina to be taken by Craviotto, the man who joined Independiente from Estudiantes last season. Chile in possession and approaching the halfway line. Neither side made any mark on the game as yet. As the ball runs us rather unkindly away from Rubio, one of those who plays his football in Europe in Switzerland with Sangalen. But all the other countries will be watching this one, knowing that, that uh, they're probably looking at one of the two countries who might eventually win the Copa America 1991. Chile, of course, have never won it. Yeah, but at the same time, John, they have got this home advantage. So obviously they'll be one of the favourites, together with Argentina, together with Brazil. And obviously Uruguay alongside. Well, in fact, uh, the last game that Chile plays against Paraguay, who beat them in the 1979 final over three games the last time uh, Chile got that far. And they're uh, defending for the moment, defending in depth. And I think, Don, the off theory is that they're a better attacking than defending side, the Chileans. Very much so. Uh, they, they virtually throw everybody forward. The only two have to tidy things up is the sweeper, Garrado, and also, obviously, the goalkeeper, Toledo, who do hell of a good job. And they depend on them to keep things tidy. So everybody else goes forward. In possession for Argentina, and it was Estrada rolling the ball to his right, then Simeone knocks it further out wide. Brought forward by Fabian Basualdo, who's been a very regular member of the side since the uh, new coach Basile took over. Basualdo left out only once, in fact, in uh, Basile's reign. <laughs> they do like to give him the bird here to the fans, they let them know their whistling technique is excellent. Well, they're very... Uh, uh, the crowd, uh, because they're, they're, they're brought up to uh, high technical skills and good passing, if any player is off the mark for his pass, uh, they're, they're they, they soon let them know that they, you know, they, they don't think they ought to be doing that. As, as good professionals, they ought to do better. Toledo leaving uh, goal-kicking duties to Vilches, and Argentina snapping the ball up, and it's nicely worked four towards uh, Canigia. Batistuta, and they're all around the ball again here. And it was Batistuta calling for it. He looked as though he might have just wandered into an offside position, but the ball didn't reach him in any event. But a sloppy clearance from Vilches. Fortunately for Chile, there was a foul on Paraguez and uh, Senor Wright having a quick word with one of the Argentine players there. 
He's a big, imposing chap. I always think referees look better, look uh, as though they're in control if they are big fellows. Obviously, John, I mean, uh, if they stand above a player, the player has to take notice. Tiny Wharton was the, uh, the one in Scotland, was he? Well. Got a great reputation. Here come Chile with Contreras for the first time, really. Edge of the Argentine the penalty area, taken on by Mendoza, and the whistle sounding for the foul on Canigia. It's a vastly changed Argentine side. When you think back 12 months to those World Cup finals, and uh, no Burichaga, of course, and no Fabri, and no Serizuela, and no Maradona, a lot of changes. Simon, they're all gone, haven't they? Yes, that's right. I mean, they've, they've, I suppose Ruggieri, he's one of the older breed. Uh, Goikachia, the goalkeeper. Uh, but I think they had to re-examine their football after the World Cup. I mean, the criticism after the World Cup was, was huge. What a lovely little slick pass that one was, and it almost opened up uh, the Argentine defence. The cross in not good, though. Directed uh, straight at Goikachia. He was able to come from his line and gather Harvest it in, but it was a lovely little flick that opened it up in the first place. Yes, it was, John. And I noticed also that Zamorano, he was getting across his defender to get into that near post. As you know, he's outstanding in the in the air, the, uh, the Chilean centre-forward Zamorano. And it would be interesting to see how Ruggieri and Vasquez cope with him. Uh, because he can play, I fancy him as a, as a, as a good uh, world, a good international player. So a number of free kicks awarded in the early stages, as you would have expected. These sides are not going to take any prisoners tonight, that's for sure. So much depending on the outcome of this game. It's Argentina coming forward, Canigia looking to break through. And a nice turn there, and that's going to be yet another free kick awarded for the foul. The tackle on Rubio. Sounds as though we've got a yellow card. I said sounds as though, you can tell from the reaction of the crowd. And it looks as though Craviotto might well have picked up the first booking of the night. But I think he's letting them know the reason charge, John. Quite right, too. Uh, whether it's the first ten minutes or not, they got, if he thinks it's a booking offence, he's booking them. And that's going to be another free kick, and it's this man Zamorano, joint top scorer in the competition now. He wins it. There was a handball down on the ground. I think the referee was close there, and he saw it, and he's hawk-eyed, and that's good. Free kick to be taken by Contreras for Chile. Dead ball specialist Contreras has scored a penalty, of course, in these competitions already, and that's a lovely little ball. Played out wide right for Mendoza, the cross in causing a little bit of havoc, but uh, dealt with capably. This is useful. Good turn inside the area. On the cross, there, uh, there was no push. That's what they were looking for. The Chilean player stumbled inside the box as the cross came in. That was a super turn in the box by Rubio, though, John. I mean, the ball is angled into the box. And he takes it in, in his stride and turns there, checks back inside and puts a nice cross in. And there was a bump on the back post, John. Uh, whether the player had got the ball or not, but there was definitely a check on the back post. A block, as we say. Well, that sort of thing you get in American football, more, yeah. isn't it? Uh, that's another one as well. The, uh, the count of three kicks must be quite high. At half-time, we'll bring you our usual statistical analysis of the way things are going. Well, they knocked over Canigia there, John, and, and the, the, uh, the Chileans won't want Canigia to turn on the ball and run at them, because that's when he's very dangerous. He can prize open the defence, or he can create dead ball situations, because he runs hard at defenders. From Simeone, it's lofted into the penalty area, and that, uh, he's had to get well, the way everybody's walking away, it's obviously come off Ruggieri's head for a goal kick to Chile. Confirmation of moments ago, you probably saw it at Caviotto's booking, first of the night from Senor Wright. But these are 28th Copper Americas, if you're going by the official list, been well contested here, very enjoyable football we're getting. Eight minutes underway, it's nil nil. Chile in the ascendancy once more, Contreras striding forward, and he, he does so purposefully, plays a useful ball out here to Mendoza too. Further right of him was Rubio. Slanted off the outside of the boot and the push against the attacker. Free kick against him. Free kick for Argentina. Football means so much to these countries. I mean, the, when you saw Maradona crying in Rome last year, it was a genuine anguish that he was feeling. I think what it is, John, is that uh, 
uh, these countries are a little bit like Italy. That, that they haven't got uh, kind of thousands and thousands of other things to do. They haven't got other sports to look at. Uh, in general, football's the only thing they've got. It's like Italy. I mean, they have a full house virtually every Saturday in every ground uh, in Italy. And they do here. And the people love, love the game. I mean, they love the skills of the game. But it's still nil-nil at the moment. And again, we keep referring to it, but those five goals of Paraguay's in a match earlier this evening have really made life very interesting at the top of Group A. Very interesting indeed. Just a reminder, it's Paraguay and Chile on four points, Argentina on two, Peru and Venezuela still to register a point. I think they're going to be going home very shortly. Free kick count continues to spiral. Guizhou out wide here is Craviotto, the man cautioned. They used to pick up bookings of these fellows. Now here he is, Batistuta. Man with an excellent goal scoring record in Argentine uh, football last season. Batistuta, he ended the season with 13 goals. Well, he made his debut recently against Brazil. In fact, this is only his third cap he's winning tonight. So a relative novice at this level. But a useful looking one. All sliced off the boot there. It could have fallen more handily than it did for Chile. Kept in play. Man on the overlap up the right, and that might create a bit of space for Mendoza. Chances here if he lays a good ball in. Good control. Oh, is there a push here? They look for the referee. He shakes his head. No penalty given. Every Chilean voice raised in protest. He took that ball ever so well, Zanarano. I mean, it was just at the back of him, and he caressed it with his right foot here and took it past the defender, and there was a little bit of a check. The defender took it pushed across his path, the goalkeeper came out and tied it up. It is the type of decision the referee can't give a penalty on, but uh, there's a little bit of a foul about it. Nonetheless, I was going to say a brave decision in front of a Chilean-based uh, audience like this one is. And he's touch under pressure in the box for Super. Yeah. Actually, the Chileans are getting down this right side very very well using Mendoza well yeah, down here. yes they are uh, Mendoza and Rubio there's the little back heel this time it's not good however and it's picked up for Argentina but I think that Simeone is going to lose it gives Chile the chance to come once more the ball threaded through they build up nicely again here with Contreras twice involved he might get the shot in Contreras over the top but again he was Featured heavily in that builder. Yeah, well, he, he sits. He plays a little bit like Latore. He sits kind of 15 yards off the centre forward, off Samarano, kind of deep off him, and he plays balls into them and, and gets it back from them. Plays it into the game, gets it back off them there. Then he's looking for his shot. Lovely little ball back from Rubio. He sliced it, Contreras, but he was in the position. 31 years of age, Contreras, uh, earlier this month, so he's been around the international scene for a while. Good goal kick, that one from Goykachia, picked out his man. That man was Franco. Oh, that's beautiful skill from Kanidja. This is what he does so well, running at defenders. Kanidja! Wasn't a bad shot either, it looked as though it was going to be on the mark. Now it appeals there as uh, Estrada had come forward. But that was the first real flash of typical Kanijia. That's right, John. That was the first time he's got turned. They've allowed him to get turned, and he created himself a good shooting position. Some good football being played by both sides here, and Craviotto having to be alert. The man coming in behind him. Again, it was Contreras who was coming in. Craviotto was cool then. He was under pressure, and not an easy ball to deal with. No, he wasn't. So, that, that, that's sometimes a full-back's nightmare. And the cross is coming in from the opposite side to deal with. Rubio's got a bang on the ankle that they're tending to at the moment. And here's this fellow, Foggy Contreras, from the University Catolica Club, with the corner kick for Chile. Floated longish towards the penalty spot. Away, but it's got to be picked up by one of the Chilean defenders stepping forward. That man was Garrido. Este takes it on. Holds things up, and uh, Oswaldo sticking with his man. Ball will run out of play. Disappointing for Chile. The referee says it's for a goal kick. 
interesting game is this. There's contrasting styles here, and uh, there's some very inventive football being played. Yeah, well, Chile try and get in, passing their way in, uh, John. More times not going wide, but they play balls into feet, get them back, play it wide, get the cross in. Now, Argentina, they they like people to run at the defence with the ball. They're looking to get the ball into Canigia and Batistuta, and they'll take the defenders on. Here's Buzualdo, swinging cross, disappointing one though. That's, he'll take those all day with Toledo, the goalkeeper. Nick back here. Right, that goes up, and they can go across the back line. Well, it's nice and pretty to watch and he skips away from Batistuta's challenge but the second time Batistuta got a foot there he won the ball and uh, again Basualdo this time steps in field to continue the possession football being played by Argentina here but they're certainly a more purposeful looking side than they were throughout the World Cup finals last year although they reached the final they didn't really please anybody with their style then but I think this is quite a pleasing Argentine side I agree, John. I'll tell you why in a minute. Canigia, Batistuta, good left-footed effort as well. Well uh, dived on by Toledo, the goalkeeper, who generally gets his angles right. I think what happened, John, is that they changed their tactics. I think because they're playing zone at the back, uh, players are not are not fixed. They're, they're not they're armed to follow a forward all over the pitch. They're in position. They're in positions to get possession and, and expose that area of the pitch. And obviously they express themselves more from that position. Well, it's been attractive to watch so far, even though we're without a goal. This is Craviotto by hooker by crook. He uh, gets past a couple of defenders. And Chile are not going to find it easy. Well, they knew they wouldn't, obviously, against the side of Argentina's quality. But, the, of course, the big thing about Argentina is, unlike one or two of the other countries here, they're not going to be overawed because they've experienced all this sort of thing before. That's right, John. I mean, they've uh, they played a high level. And most of their players play in good club football as well. They're all with top clubs. Uh, so they'll take this kind of game in their stride. They'll be patient. They'll keep, keep playing their football, keep making their passes, making their runs, until in the end they'll get the break they need. Absolutely, that fact can be underlined. I mean, the Argentina side, uh, Argentina side contains players from the likes of uh, Racing and Independiente and River Plate and Boca Juniors. And of course, the two players in Europe, uh, Diego Simeone plays for Pisa in Italy and Canigia plays at Atalanta. Mm -hmm. High quality stuff, and that's a free kick. I think we could have given that from here. Not that anybody would have heard us down on the pitch, but uh, already, look, Chile. Look as though they may well be having to replace Rubio, one imagines, with uh, Ramirez. Rubio took that bang on the ankle. He must be favourite to come off if anybody does. If he does come off, John, I, I would hope they would put Yanez on. I was very impressed with Yanez in the last game. Free kick from Contreras. It didn't make any distance. Yes, that would be a bit baffling, really, because Yanez did do well. And it would appear to be a direct swap, eh? but it was definitely the number six we saw there, Ramirez. It looked as though he was getting ready for some action. Might have done that to fool us. There we are. In fact, it's Paragues who's gone off, so, well, that's why we can get Yanez on in place of Rubio, because Paragues being replaced by Ramirez is a much... Uh, I think it's a midfield player for a midfield yeah, player. Yeah, it is a more acceptable player. 18 minutes gone, it's 0 It must bear uh, in the Chilean thinking, however, that they've never beaten Argentina in 14 previous Copa meetings. That sort of thing does weigh on the mind. Well, the coach should be telling them there's always a first time, John. Yeah. There's always a first time for everything. Yeah, one thing's for sure, I don't think any of these 22 players will have had to be motivated very much for this one tonight. This is one of the biggest games of their careers. Here's Canigia, that rolling style of his trying to get away from the markers. He's won a free kick, already taken. John, I remember last year when QPR played at Liverpool, they'd never ever won at Liverpool. 
But we did that day, and we won well. There were a few of those sort of uh, barriers broken last yeah. year in the English League, actually. Thanks to uh, Adidas for their cooperation in our coverage of the South American Championships. And here it is from Santiago. But we bring you Chile and Argentina 0-0, deadlocked at the moment. Toledo's made uh, one save from Batistuta. Fairly, he's driven fairly straight at him, but I think Toledo's proved himself a, a more than adequate goalkeeper. Oh, yes. He did let two goals in, it, obviously, in the last game against Peru, but th they were definitely not his fault. And on a beastly night. Conditions much more favourable for football today. Well, those wet conditions it was on that night are difficult for goalkeepers. I mean, any sharp shot that's coming in can come away from the hands or come away from the body. Mendoza, the man with the ball in his hands, with the throwing for Chile here. Infield it goes. Let's stay. Move wide left. Margas. Another of the players from Colo Colo who played in that Libertadores Cup final recently. This is Franco, who's good on the ball. Nice passer of the ball, Franco. As England found uh, at Wembley. Argentina still coming forward with Canigia now. Oops. Seems to go past so many men and now he turns and he seems to win more free kicks than anybody out on the, on the park. But he seems to me to only go one way off, and that's an interesting situation developing, and Kanigia coming through, well, he started it all. Only a couple of yards inside his own half, and he nearly got on the end of it all, too. What he does, John, is, is when he picks balls, he goes for space. He, he, he obviously attacks a defender, but he attacks any space. Yeah, that, he, uh, uh, he looked close for offside, but he, he could have perhaps... Right foot, know. maybe, yeah. if he'd have gotten the right foot in there, you would have favoured him. But when he's running, yeah, well, he comes across now, and it's a good cross in the back of the defence. Perhaps if he swung his left foot out, he, he, he did put it out, but try and just get his foot hooked round the ball. It's easy for me, Don, isn't it? It is easy, <laughs> and that was going across the place. Okay. But what I was saying, John, is that when he runs at defenders, he, he goes at them, but he attacks the space down the sides of them. And he just, he just depends on his own pace to get by, and obviously his determination. And he's come here on the back of a very uh, outstanding season with Atalanta. He's done well in Italy this year. It's been a year. Some South American players go to Europe in Italy and Spain, and they, they tend to be disappointed probably because of the different uh, conditions there. Generally, they're away from home. But he's one who seems to have improved. Yes, I saw a lot of Canigia in Italy, uh, John. I saw him play for Atalanta a few times, and he was doing exactly what he's doing here tonight for Argentina. Picking up the ball and running at defenders. He was spying on him for QPR, Don. <laughs> I don't think we could afford him. <laughs> <laughs> free kick again. Well, we've had a lot of free kicks given by uh, Mr. Wright, our official here. Certainly one of the most experienced officials that uh, they could have plucked out of the hat for this match. And I would have thought it was needed too. Of course, if Brazil and Argentina have been group drawn together in the same group, that would have been a tasty little affair as well. As it is, I think, it's two pretty well-balanced groups. With obviously Argentina and Chile, and now Paraguay, the three favourites and the three ones who are going to contest Group A. And in Group B, well, Colombia has been going quite well. Brazil, of course, have that uh, win against Bolivia. And who knows about Uruguay? Well, here it's very much Chile and Argentina, and this is Argentina's Canigia. And he's got pace as well, and well, that time he might have released the ball to his left rather than trying to do it all by himself. But it was a good tackle there by uh, Margas. Across from the left back position, and made a good tackle. And straight away, the action switches to the other end of the field, and down they go. The challenge there by Vasquez on Samarano, not appreciated by many in the crowd, but uh, the referee saw nothing wrong with it. Throwing awarded. On a little uh, overhead kick, nicely executed, but the Argentines have got enough people back to cope with that sort of situation. Batistuta. 
Well, they are so good on the ball, so many of these players, and that's an important ball for him to win as well. Stretching out the leg, but Argentina come forward with Simeone, and this is a promising move. If the cross here is good, well, it's a corner kick, but an important bit of defending. In fact, it's uh, obviously come off the Argentine player, so it's going to be a goal kick. And if you're not amused. But whether it's because of the format or what, I don't know. But in the World Cup, we saw many matches where teams seem settled to just go for the draw. Not to lose. Well, here, there's a different attitude of mind straight from the off. Well, they're definitely going to teach you, that's for a fact. You know, there's, there's no kind of sitting back in their own half, waiting for things to happen. They're trying to make things happen, both teams. And uh, this might be a yellow card. It is. It's the second one shown. Raviotto having got the first one, Argentina pick up their second booking of the evening. It's uh, Vasquez this time. The man from Ferro Pirolista. And Chile with the chance to get that ball inside the area. Zamorano looking, well, he got the ball back from an unusual source, really. It came back to him off the defender and he had a toe poke with the right foot, but who knows, it's he's, worth a go. He's a very effective player, is Amarano. He's working all the time, he's trying to get away from the defence. He's looking for any kind of opportunity to get a shot in or get a header in. His movement is good. The only thing about him, he looks very untidy around the legs. I mean, the way he puts his socks and his pads on, like he, he doesn't look a professional. <laughs> a bit Frank Worthington like it, that's yeah. as if Frank used to look like that sometimes, didn't yeah. he? Frank, oh, he could play. Oh, he could play. I just feel town as well, uh, John. Huddersfield Town, Bolton Wanderers, Leicester City, Birmingham City went around with Frank Worthington. Should have won more caps than he did bring the free kick awarded here. Let's concentrate on Chile and Argentina. Canigia wins it inevitably. And the free kick. Simeone coming across. Probably float this one in with the, uh, the left foot. Vasquez there, confirmation that he is the second to have been shown a yellow card on the Argentine side. Caviotto was the first, he's fooled me, he's done it with the right foot. And uh, Chile should get this away, some confusion there, and they almost let in Ruggieri of all people, the captain staying up there, and uh, just occasionally in defence they do dither. Oh yeah, John, I mean, I tell you, I'm, I'm, they've won me over to Chile, but I'm very aware of uh, they do leave holes, and they are a little bit uncertain in their marking around the defence. If you were their coach, you'd lose a few more hairs, Don, would you? Sure he will, just like me, John. Brian Pichilli, taken uh, down the line by Mendoza. John, if you're in football and uh, you take it to your manager or coach, you either go bald or grey, <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> you decided on the former. Yes. <laughs> well, there he is, the, uh, the Chilean coach, Arturo Salah. 28 minutes gone here, it's Chile nil, Argentina nil, but don't let that scoreline fool you, it's quite an attractive encounter. It's had one or two uh, patches where it's gone a little bit quiet, but uh, there's plenty of interesting football going on down there. And here come Argentina now, again the build-up, it always promises so much and they move quickly and they keep given against Chile, minus the right here, and there was the old yellow card again. So that's the third of the evening, and uh, he could well set a world record tonight, I have a feeling. He seems determined right from the out, offset here, to uh, book anything, and uh, he almost missed the free kick from the director, but there it is, coming in and well dealt with by Toledo. Spasvaldo runs back to his more nominal position of right back. In quickly. They're certainly on top of the job for Argentina at the moment. Vilches was the last player booked. The man who scored the first goal of this Copa America in the 2 0 win over Venezuela. Now he's got himself in the referee's notebook for a different reason. Three bookings in the half already.
And certainly there have been a few clear openings. I think it's got to be said that uh, neither goalkeeper has as yet been called upon to, no, to make a save out of the ordinary. No, nobody's actually... Uh, Kenny just the one. He looked as though he'd worked himself right into the box, come across onto his right foot, but didn't get a good shot in at the end of it. Chile nil, Argentina nil in Group A in Santiago. Paraguay, the group leaders at the moment after their 5 0 demolition of Venezuela. Batistuta, nice ball through. Canidia, good defending though, keeping him at bay while it was dealt with by Toledo. And uh, now that's a free kick against Batistuta for that illegal challenge on Mendoza. Ball taken away and played out wide by the substitute Ramirez who came on for Paraguay in the early stages of the game. Seen much of Rubio in the last few minutes. No, John, he was doing very well down the right side. Uh, but, but since he's not, he's gone out of the game a little bit. So, I mean, again, the coach might well think of bringing on Yanez at half time, perhaps. To try and give uh, Chile an extra dimension. So they've scored six goals in their two previous matches. And those five that Paraguay have put into Venezuela's net tonight make goals all the more important for them. This is Argentina on the attack, however. With Franco, a bad ball in field and picked up here and clipped back in by Latore. Some good work going on at the moment and the Chile defence under a lot of pressure. Latore is going to take the corner kick. The ball having to be put behind by Lizardo Garrido, one of the Colo Colo representatives in the Chile lineup. Argentina have a corner. So the fans who've made the journey from Buenos Aires, quite a few of them, are hopeful now. Latare swings it in, and well, he gets down just to later well because he can't have had much time to see that. That's right, he did very well at the end. And we also know that uh, Argentina can be very dangerous at corners, John, can't we? Remember at Wembley when we were when England were winning 2 0? He scored twice from a corner. He scored twice from headers, didn't he? Two corners, they? yes. Two corners and two headers indeed. Garcia getting one of them. He's on the substitutes bench tonight. No goals here for the moment, however. Simeone losing out. He lost his concentration for the moment then. And Ramirez runs it all the way back to Toledo. Sounds more like a town, doesn't it, Toledo, than a goalkeeper. One of the uh, players from University of Catolica. Like you say, John, nobody's having much success up front, but the, the best thing about it is that both, both teams, when they get the ball, are going straight back at the opposition. And this is the only way they'll break things down, is that you get the ball and you'll go again, and they get the ball and they come again. And you keep doing that, you keep going until you get in. The pressure will create the goal. And again, the first goal is going to be so vital in this match. A couple of good old-fashioned shoulder charges went in there, I saw, and the referee said, well, keep going, let's have a few more of those. He liked them, I think. Argentina hustling well for the ball, but it's come out wide here to Mendoza. Forward it goes to Contreras. Contreras who had a very good opening 20 minutes, and he's still here. Nicks it through the legs of the defender. He really nutmegged him then. But uh, there were enough Argentina defenders around to win the ball, and now they come with Batistuta. Look at that, though, four Chile men around him. Well, that's rather ambitious. Uh, it looked ambitious, John, but Batistuta's... I mean, I've been impressed with Batistuta. He moves off the ball better than Canigia. But what he'd done, Toledo plays well off his line. He plays like a real top-class goalkeeper. He, his starting position is well off his line. He sweeps behind the defence. And I think Batistuta is aware of how far he plays off his goal line. And although he'd only picked the ball up kind of 10 yards in the Chilean half, he tried to chip him. He certainly did. Of course, we saw Maradona in the last Copa America attempt a really audacious chip from about 50 yards, which struck a crossbar. I noticed there that that was Craviotto who gave away the free kick, and he might well have been booked early in this game, but he's not holding back on any of his tackles. Argentina players rarely do. Pizarro, we've not seen much of him as yet in this game. Shot straight, but straight at Breakage here. There's the captain, Jaime Pizarro, captain of club and country. 
Quite a cheer, of course. The goalkeeper here really made his name during those World Cup finals last year. Nobody really had heard of him before that, but he proved himself an excellent uh, shot stopper and penalty saver. That's he? right. He came on for Pompadou. Pompadou got injured, if you remember, early on in the World Cup. Hope he's well. Oh, busted me, yeah, and uh, missed the injury. And Goya Kachir came on and did very, very well. He did. There's the shot. It's not the hardest one for him to handle. And every time there was a penalty shootout, it was just Goya Kachir who was saving the ball, saving the pen. No play kick given this time, however. Chile able to come away unscathed, although he's playing himself into a bit of a tight corner here is Mendoza. And if he loses out, his teammates will be rather annoyed with him. Well, they've done what quite nicely. And they get the throw. The coup. Oh, yeah, under pressure in the corners of the pitch. You know, they keep their head and they try and play their way out of that corner. Going down the line was to uh, Contreras and uh, the three right says that is a throw in for Argentina. Couldn't meet the universal approval in the stadium here, but then it wouldn't because this is Chile. And Chile are the home nation. Nil-nil it is, with ten minutes to go to half-time in Santiago. Remember, Chile kicked off the tournament with a 2-0 victory against Venezuela. Then they beat uh, Peru by four goals to two. So things have gone swimmingly for them so far, but they defend here now. Canigia, lovely turn. Knocked off the ball, however. And again, so many red shirts around. Yeah, well, they're very aware of Canigia, and... Uh... Also, the, the referee is very aware of Kinigia. And all his little diving tricks, he's not falling for that. He's, he's uh, very aware of it. Nicely laid off by Zamorano. Did that ball go out of play? Okay, Rubio might well have taken it over the white line. So they're not finding it easy either of these sides. Argentina, of course, have actually won the uh, Copa America on nine occasions. The two defences are standing firm, John. Uh, for all the good players in the opponent's forward line, the two defences are standing firm and they're coping with all the attacks at the moment. We think one goal might be enough to win this one. Here's Contreras. Got the ball in they were looking for. And uh, I think he's complaining is Zamorano that somebody gave him a nudge in the back there. Well, he's getting blocked, John. That's what he's doing. They're stepping across him, the, the Argentinian defenders. But he tries to make his dash into the near post. They're stepping across him and they... You know, they... They're very professional, John. I think Buzualdo also feigned a bit of a trip then, maybe. However, the referee voted in favour of the Argentine defender. So, Estrada brings it out. He's another new name, uh, Estrada, on the international scene. He's made a mistake here as well, and this could open them up for Zamorano's shot. Down on his knees goes Goicochea. Zamorano can't beat him to add to the three goals he's already accumulated in these championships, but that was a warning, Estrada was just a little too lackadaisical and Zamorana almost punished him. Got his shot in again, John. Uh, he's a, I think he's a hell of a good player, Zamorana. Well, Estrada, John, he, he plays like uh, Ozzy Ardiles used to play for Argentina. He just sits in front of the back four, he takes the ball off the back four, he delivers it off to other players. He's a playmaker. And also, obviously, he's the fellow who sits in front of the defence and... De and virtually protects the front of the defence. Well, the, uh, well, the back pass was cut out there for Garrido. They're playing it around across the back, but uh, no real pressure on Gonzalez, on uh, Mendoza now. And uh, Chile again might have profited, and again Contreras manages to push it through the legs of the man marking him. And it was Franco. And they're nicking this ball around man to man beautifully. They've not made any progress as yet. And of course now they've lost it and they've got to get back and defend against this man Kanijia. Three chilly players around him straight away. He looked to dive then to me after he played the ball. But the front kick goes his way. Yeah. All those little one-twos, John, have played with the outside of your front foot. You put your right foot out there and you just flick it off with the outside of your right foot. Next player does the same. They all join together and they're getting a little triangle. And they just keep playing one touch off on each other. It's good when he comes off. I thought, uh, Don, what would have delighted you as a coach then, though, was as Chile were making progress, they'd passed the ball eight or nine times, and yet they didn't make any ground because oh, every right. Argentina player was around the ball. Exemplary work, really, in defence. 
which is why it's still nil-nil, approaching half-time in Santiago. Well, we've not had a goalless draw yet, so uh, let's hope they keep up their record on that front in this match. Certainly everybody's been enterprising in going for goals, as Chile do now. And the ball looked to me to come off Rubio. But uh, it's good defending there. Ball is given. Rubio found himself in a nice position on his right side. Ru Ruggieri came across and held him, held him. Went with his run and then blocked the cross. Good defending. Contreras to take the corner. They look for Zamorana up there to uh, finish things off. He's the tallest man who'll be going up, Zamorano. And, uh, well, ahead of game, and it wasn't from him, in fact. It was from the substitute, Ramirez. Another of the Colo Colo players. There are a few of them out there now. Five in all from Colo Colo. And uh, University... Universidad, I should say, Catolica. They have got four players out there, so nine of that Chile side play for just two clubs. Five minutes to half time. Still nil nil, and it's impossible to say which side has had the greater share of possession. I think it's pretty even. I think it's very even, John. Yeah. I mean, regarding that, you know, kind of getting blocks of players from from the from the successful clubs, a lot of continental uh, clubs do that. And if you if you get the Spanish team, you know, there'll be four from Barcelona, four from Real Madrid, and it's a lot easier for the coach. Because the understanding's already there. I know when Ron Greenwood took over the England team, he, he, he kind of brought in a block of Liverpool players. For the second play against Switzerland. That's it? right. And obviously, in this situation, because the coach, Salah, used to coach at Coca Cola, he knows what those five players yeah. can do. Yeah. Fair point. Chile coming on the attack, latter stages of the first half. The ball just running away, however, from Este. Still it's picked up and worked out wide here for Margas, the man with a crew cut, easily identifiable. Also looks a bit fairer of hair than the rest, Samarano blocked out this time, and uh, the uh, man Vasquez will get the point for Argentina. Vasquez, one of those booked in this first half, Traviotto, the other Argentine player, cautioned. Vilches of Chile too in the referee's notebook. And the throw to be taken by Pasualdo. Winning his eighth cap tonight, and from River Plate. That was Margas getting in. I think Margas had a better game tonight than he had in the previous. Match. Yes, he has, John. There's only one criticism, as far as I'm concerned. And I don't know whether it's his fault, because I don't know how he plays for his club. But you see, the difference between him and Mendoza is Mendoza's right footed, he gets down the right side. Now Margas, he gets down this left side, but he's right footed. Yes, so he has to stop every now and again, because he's not sure what he's going to do, and he has to come back onto his right foot and go inside. And you will find that most of the Chileans' best attacks come down the right side rather than the left side. Because he has now watch him left here left. now, watch him here. So he'll get on that right foot, he'll keep playing with that right foot, he'll try with his left foot, but you see, it's not good enough. Don, I think he was listening to you there. That was yeah, an absolutely yeah, perfect so. illustration, wasn't it? He couldn't have done it better for us. He hasn't got a left foot. No, he hasn't got a left foot. That for a left-sided player is a disaster, I would have thought. However, here's Batistuta, bowled over, 10 yards outside the area, but I think he'd done a little bit of pushing and shoving as well, and the referee said it was six of one half a dozen of the other. And Contreras for Chile. Goes inside Argentine territory. Very much neighbours, these, of course, the Andes. Well, we say it's an Andes derby. Chile looking for a goal to finish the half, and there was no offside despite the appeal. Contreras showing good control. Nicked it over the first man, not the second. Again, Argentina defending in depth, and Ruggeri really marshals the forces around. Oh, yes. No, he's, he's, the, uh, he's the ringleader, isn't he? Well, he's the boss of the defence, John. Yeah. And he's got the brains. Well, that's a corner. The line's been in a perfect position to see that uh, Caviotto was unable to keep that ball from going over the white line. And what a fillip it would be for Chile if they could get a goal before the break. The team talk would be entirely different. That's right. I mean, uh, it would lift everybody, John. It would lift the crowd. It obviously would lift the players. You always feel that someone like Ruggieri is going to get it away from uh, 
corner kick just floated in. They've got to work on what they can do, and this time it's Cole Kachir who doesn't need any assistance, comes through his line, gathers. I think the whistle had sounded, and the free kick given anyway for the challenge on the goalkeeper. They don't like challenges on goalkeepers. Keep knocking those far post corners in, uh, Contreras. In the first game, he knocked everything into the near post. And, and Rubio was getting flicks, and in fact they scored off one near post corner. And yet for some unknown reason, obviously they've been working at it in training, Contreras is knocking all these corners to the far post. And Ruggier is there to head them away, and obviously Gory Kachir can come out and catch them. I'm a bit surprised. Well, they haven't shown much adaptability on the corners, have they, so far? And the onus again, I would think most people will feel is on Chile here. Although Argentina, of course, do need the points. Uh, they've only got the two so far from their one previous game, obviously. And uh, they would hope to draw level on points. Uh, or I don't think Chile are playing for a draw, John, but uh, a draw is not a bad result for them. They've won their two opening games. So a draw is quite a good result. Virtually puts them through. And half-time it is, the Brazilian referee sends the teams away to the dressing room here. We've had no goals, but it's been an interesting half, to say the least. Neither side really created what you would call a very good chance, and neither goalkeeper particularly troubled. But Chile and Argentina will come out all fired up for the second 45 minutes after the talks from their various coaches. Arturo Sala of Chile and Alfio Basile will do their job. We'll be back after the break. Half-time score here, Chile nil, Argentina nil. Welcome back to Santiago as the two sides, Chile and Argentina, take the pitch deadlocked at nil-nil. And uh, for the second half, Argentina are bringing on Leonardo Rodriguez from the San Lorenzo club. We'll let you know in a moment who's gone off. So, coach... For Argentina, Alfio Basile playing his trump card, maybe, in bringing on Rodriguez, the man who made his debut against Venezuela in the previous game when he came on for Latore. It might well be Latore who's gone off here as well. He certainly didn't feature very prominently in the first half, and the word has been that he's been suffering from toothache. He's had problems, and uh, it was certainly made known that Latore might well be replaced in this game. Well, he started it. We'll find out in a moment whether he's the one who has been replaced by Rodriguez. Chile looked to be starting the second half with the uh, same 11 players that finished the first. They've already made one substitution. Nelson Paraguez was an early casualty. And he was uh, replaced by Miguel Ramirez. It was Latore indeed who went off, so we got that right. The new man on is Rodriguez. We've had a Ramirez and a Rodriguez on there. can roll the R's in the second half then. That's right, John. I, I mean, I've, I've got to say this, Latore never got in the game in the first half. Now, I don't know whether they're taking off because he, he has got toothache or whether he was having a poor game. And they're looking for somebody to come and, and add to uh, Canigia and Batista. Batista. Uh, Batista. You always want to say Batista, don't you? Because they had Sergio Batista in the Argentina. Yeah, he was, he was the anchor man in midfield, John. He was a hard man. And here come Chile straight away at the start of this half. With a good work down the right-hand side here and an awkward little clearance effected by uh, Basualdo. Here's one to chase for Franco. It's run all the way through to the goalkeeper of Toledo. Margas who plays the ball left. That's going to be the free kick. If Chile can get things going down this left side as well as they've been getting things down that right side, I mean, they've got in again there in the first few minutes of the second half. They've got down to the virtually to the byline on that right side and got a nice crossing, which, all right, the Argentine defence got it away in the end. If they could get this left side going as well, I'm sure the goal's going to come. Well, that certainly would make it very interesting and it would ignite this crowd, that's for certain. They uh, are really looking forward to Chile beating Argentina for the first time ever. It would be the first time ever in South American Championships. In 14 previous meetings, Argentina have won 10 and drawn 4. That was a poor ball. There was a good chance of an opening there. Yeah, the idea was there, John. There was a good... Canigia was making a good run. Some execution that was lacking. This is Franco. Simeone, forward. 
Chile winning it, winning the ball back. And, uh, Argentina do exactly the same. Simeone knocking a man away, keeping control, winning the free kick as well. There were two men who went in on him. I think it was the captain, Pizarro, who conceded the free kick. So Toledo has to hop around on his goal line. The normal procedure on these free kicks, Jim, is that uh, someone runs over the ball in the object and, and then they chip the ball to the back post to Ruggieri, who tries to head the ball into the run of the player who's gone over the ball in the first instance, knock it down to somebody in the box. That's been... Uh, Argentina's created a lot of goals over the years doing this. Typical South American ploy. Now then, can they get the first break? Free kick for Argentina. Cracked in, took a deflection, and it should be a corner kick, I imagine, if it came up, certainly off the ankle of one of the Chile players. It will be, it is. And coming across here to take it is Rodriguez, the substitute, winning his second cap. Another of the uh, long-haired Argentine players that we see so many of nowadays. And in it comes, and it's... The defender, the substitute who got up there, the ball bobbling around very dangerously inside that area. Chile now able to extricate themselves from difficulties, but it was in there for some time. Finally brought away by Este, transferred inside, and that's a good ball played by Contreras. The build-up continuing down this right side, which is where they generally have done their best work. Ruggieri looking to play the ball against the legs of the Chilean defender, but it wasn't until against the Chilean attacker. Went over that dead ball line first, and it will be a corner for Chile. Chile have beaten Venezuela and Peru in coming this far to their third game. Just the one match left after this one against Paraguay, and uh, safely in the hands of Sergio Gocachia. Hold out sharply. But, uh, bit of a diving in challenge from Pizarro. Uh, the Chile over Ooh, Margas again. He didn't really look as he played that ball. Free kick awarded to Chile, however. 23 free kicks in all in the first half. I noticed neither side had an offside verdict, however. Shows maybe a lack of ambition. But here come Chile now with Este swinging the ball out wide left. The pattern not effective because Pizarro was perhaps a little out of position. They don't always look where they're passing the ball. It might be one of those occasions where the occasion itself has been a bit too much for some of the players. That's right, I've got to say this to I mean, both teams in the first half attacked each other virtually. Every time they had the ball, there was no kind of holding possession. It was looking to get forward, looking to get the ball into the front players uh, without really getting any success. I, I think the Argentinians, I think they ought to get more players from midfield forward. Yes. You know, we, we're not seeing any runs through from, from midfield. We're not seeing any uh, midfield players from the Argentinians getting into the box. Yet another free kick awarded by Mr. Wright here. It's to Argentina and Diego Simeone, who plays his football with Pisa in Italy. Somewhere near the leaning tower. Floats it in here, and it's the... Uh, Chilean defender who gets it away. It was Estre that time. It's come straight back, however. Well, Argentina have certainly enjoyed their share of attacking moments in this game. And they've been a much more attractive proposition than the side which played in Italia, Italia 90. Margas from Colo Colo with the throw in. Another of those who played in the Libertadores Cup final. The one who played against the Boca Juniors, of course, in the semi finals. Argentina on the attack here with the substitute Rodriguez up in the air from Basualdo. Nothing very effective going on, and still neither goalkeeper really being troubled in this match as Canigia tries to find a different route to goal. No free kick given, that's what he was looking for, and he was looking to get inside the penalty area, of course. Chile come and Chile about to make a second substitution. I would have thought that Yanez might well be the man that they would look to. He might be just the fellow to prize, o prize open the Argentinian defence. Header coming in, a tepid one. 
Very effective when he came on in the second half against Peru. Very effective. Well, he's a very experienced player, Patricio Yanez, of course. He's uh, played in, in Europe for a number of years and uh, featured in the 1982 World Cup finals in that country. Here we have a look at it again, and it was dealt with contemptuously by Goyko Chia. Zamorano got it well again, though, there, John. I mean, he jumped up at two defenders to get his head on the ball. It's a question of giving him better service, really, isn't it? Do you feel he could use it? Simeone dabbing it through. Canigia, this is dangerous. Look, again, he looked for the push from behind, but I think the referee is going to give him a severe talking to there. Well, it, it, it's interesting, John, because in Italy this year, the, the referees were booking players for diving in the box. Uh, what do you make of this one? And he does it all the time. Well, really, he was never in a control. He's virtually falling as he was dribbling. He's looking to fall as soon as he gets the ball. And the referees, are, I mean, they're not silly, are they? I mean, they know what it's all about. They've seen him play before. This is well done. Beautifully played. Oh, excellent work here for Chile. Can he set him up? Oh, dear. That really would have been a marvellous individual goal. It was a great effort from Rubio. He went past two defenders there. They were literally trying to drag him down. He got past run. You know, he, he went past about three defenders on his way and tried to bend it with his left foot just inside the far post. He showed what a tough and durable little character is. He wouldn't be knocked off the ball, and that's unlucky. There wasn't enough in the box for him to play it across the edge of the six-yard box, and I think he saw a lot of blue and white shirts. And he just tried to bend it with the inside of his left foot inside the far post. Great just skill, though. Off. Great skill in getting into that position in the first place. And here comes Chile once more. They've got the bit between the teeth at the moment. That's a free kick, and it's a booking as well. Estrada, I think it is this time, incurring the wrath of the referee. Leonardo Estrada then, the third Argentine player booked, following Craviotto and Vasquez. And uh, Vilches, so far the only Chilean booked. Well, there may be no goals, but we've had four bookings. That's about a, a normal count for this sort of occasion, I would have thought, as the ball is laid forward by uh, Batistuta, number of options here for Argentina, this is a great chance. Oh, the ball in, and it's kept out. It looked to me as though Craviotto was going to have a shot to start with. That's right, and he's also offside on the far post. Yep. But, but it was a good move there, I mean, they really got the man over, he could have played the ball left. On the break, he could have played it left, or he could have played it right. Played it right, uh, but really, the player on the ball didn't do enough. Now, Craviotto here showing a little bit of inexperience. The man on the far post, you say, was definitely in an offside position as well. Mr. Wright's got his work cut out here. Four bookings already. Because Chile uh, did have a man uh, sent off in the very uh, first match, Espinosa, against uh, Venezuela. That's why he's not taken any further part. Interesting, however, that uh, Paraguez, who went off uh, today, everybody thought he'd been booked in both previous matches, so he must only have been booked in one. It's been a bit ambiguous at times, to finding out just who has and who hasn't been cautioned. Contreras, still winning the ball. And finding a colleague as well. It was uh, Zamorano he picked out. Now Pizarro rolls it invitingly to his right, Contreras involved once more, but Argentina getting enough bodies around to make sure that they've got a foot in somewhere, and it dribbled harmlessly through to Doi Gutierrez. Still a tremendous atmosphere, as you would expect, the Chilean crowd expecting so much, just hoping against hope that this is to be the day when they see their country beat Argentina for the first time ever in the Copa America. Contreras, peculiar sliced ball, it didn't come off for him that time. Chile win it back, referee says that's a free kick. Yeah. Down on the Argentine bench, Alfield Basile, hoping uh, that Argentina can just sneak it, because if they win, of course, we then have uh, three countries all on four points, and Yanez indeed is to replace the captain, Pizarro. Now, I think Pizarro is saying, why me? And he wants to stay on. And he's gone back on as well. He's a very strong character, the captain. 
and he's perhaps persuaded his coach against uh, what his idea might have been. In the last two games, he has been subbed though in the middle of the second half, John. Bizarre. Oh, lovely move here by Argentina. They strung together some passes there, and the substitute Rodriguez is in with a chance, but Chile getting bodies around. It was Margas. Simeone surrounded by Chilean defenders wins it back offside offside Kenigia that has not the balls ended in the Chilean net referee right made it uh, very obvious there what had happened and a change of mind here so Rubio is to come off and Pizarro has gone to his coach there and he said keep me on I'm the captain I'm playing a role but he said as well that Rubio is not quite fit enough it could be that job when they got the wrong numbers out of the box. <laughs> Here's Batistuta showing great strength and tenacity. Surely he fouled his man though, or maybe he was fouled himself. Which way will the referee give it? The verdict goes for... Well, let's have a look, it goes for Chile. Against Peru, John, they did exactly the same thing. Rubio went off, Yenis came on, and he lifted the team terrifically. He made some super runs, he was creating chances for Zamorano all the time. So here is Chile's free kick. If they can get the first goal, it will lift their spirits, their morale, no end. But it's got to be done still. Troy Kachir is going to have to put that ball out. They were looking for an offside verdict which didn't come. Now again, that number 11 figure is hoisted. Yanez wants to get on. Rubio probably doesn't want to come off. He's going to have to do. And the applause for Rubio. It's a little bit surprising, really, because Rubio has just had that fantastic run where he could have got the opening goal. Yeah, it would have been interesting if he'd got it, whether he would have stayed on. And look at this. Down he goes, straight away. Well... Yanez can't have been on the field there more than about three seconds, I think. Oh, well, the Argentines are very aware of him, John. Obviously, they've seen the tape of the first game, the game before this one against Peru. Went straight across him there, Simeone. Free kick is given and will be taken by Contreras. Good one in as well. It was Simeone himself who got up for it. And it's cleared as far as Kinigia, who sets off with that familiar style of his, but loses out to Margas. Here's Contreras for Chile. Nice little back heel from him. Margas has continued his run, and again proves he doesn't have a very good left foot. Very much, John. Well, to be fair, there was a tackle went in as he tried to cross the ball. Our coverage of the South American Championships brought to you in conjunction with Lucas Aid Sport. And it's Chile nil, Argentina nil. We haven't had a goalless draw in the Copa America as yet. And we're keeping our fingers crossed we don't have one tonight. Or indeed this morning if you happen to be watching in England. I think in the last 20 minutes, John, when people get tired, there's a chance. Carigia rolls it to his left for Rodriguez, who's inside the area, being pursued and harried all the way by uh, Vilches. A missed header here from Pizarro, the man who refuses to go off. And he's done well. Strength of character. I don't know whether he, he refused to go off, John, or whether he'd come across, because he's captain of the team, where he's come across to the bench. And the coach has called him over and said, look, I'm going to bring Yanez on, I want him to do this and I want him to do that. It, it, it might have looked as though yes. he was the player, but I've got a feeling that the coach had called him across as the captain to give him some instruction. You would know these things, Don, yes. you sat on a few benches in your time. Sort of things that go on in football nowadays. It's a very highly professional business. And you can tell from the singing of the crowd, they feel that Chile have their chance here, but it's still nil-nil, and Argentina giving as good as they're getting, and they're in possession now. It might just take one mistake in this match, or one flash of individual brilliance from someone to win the points. It's Chile on the attack, edge of the Argentine penalty area, shot coming in, wide of the mark, Boikachir not troubled by that one from Fabian Este. Well, if the goal comes, John, let's hope it is some individual brilliance. 
rather than a defender's mistake. Yeah, we saw the unfortunate young uh, goalkeeper the other night uh, who made a ghastly mistake and it was uh, the only goal of the game as it turned out. It was unfortunate for him. Here's Rodriguez. He seems to have made a bit of uh, difference since he came on. He's taken up good positions. Chile on the break. Look to Este in the centre circle to play a good ball and play somebody into space. He keeps possession. Now it's out wide. Well, that's a lovely touch again. Zamorano involved and he gets in there, but the ball cleared this time by Vasquez. Zamorano and Yanis combining their job. Yanis, very much the darling of Chilean football at the moment. He's come back to the country after his spell in Europe and had a marvellous season for Colo Colo. And I think he would be a hero for life if he scored a winner against Argentina. Um, on the general play up front, uh, uh, Chile look as though they've got more invention and can deliver final balls. The Argentinians around the box, around the Chilean box, are very disappointed. They yeah, don't look as though they've got something in their mind. I think their greatest threat has got to be Kinigi with these mazy runs of his and maybe winning a penalty or something, although it's going to be a brave referee to give it here in Santiago. Quarter of an hour gone in the second half. 0-0. The only thing with Kinigi, John, is he dribbles with his head down. I don't think he can see a final pass either. He never beats somebody and gets his head up to see if he can pick somebody out and give, it, give him the ball out and knock it in the net. That was Yanez trying to undo them down that side of the field once more. But Argentina able to bring that ball away. Estrada, the man who was booked a few minutes ago, turning it in field. There's a good turn again by Rodriguez. And uh, he's the one who's showing us his dribbling skills at the moment. He works the ball better, John. In field from Basualdo. Batistuta, good ball, found his man nicely then. Man Franco, however, well tackled, and again, Chile getting people it's, in there. Yeah, it's that, it's, 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 when they get into the final, final four, nothing happens no. for them, John. But then it didn't during the World Cup finals very no, often. it didn't. They don't score many goals these days, Argentina. They don't concede many either, mind you. So, here's a snapshot comes to naught. That's why we're saying that here the general feeling is that one goal for either side could well be enough on this evening. Chile come and try and break with Pizarro. The ball, however, intercepted. Canigia goes forward, looks for the return. Shot driven in over the crossbar from Batistuta. 13 goals last season for Boca Juniors. He got a couple, of course, against Venezuela in Argentina's first match here in the Copa America. And uh, coach Arturo Sala of Chile. Well, I don't know whether I would say he's satisfied or not. I think the point, as you made it, you made the point earlier, Don, would be quite useful for Chile. Actually. Oh yeah, he'll be on tender hooks, John. I mean, he he's sitting there, and obviously he's thinking, well, we're doing okay. I wish we could get a goal and get in front, because he realises that Argentina might just go and pinch one anyway. So he, he, at the end of the match, if it's a draw, he'll go away and think, well, that's okay. But at the same time. You know, in this situation, anybody can get a goal. Argentina's next game is also against Paraguay in uh, Concepcion, and their last game is against Peru back here in Santiago. So they uh, still have a couple of games to play after this one. Chile only have the one left. They are in possession at the moment. He's going to have to work out to get that ball. He did so. He's done really well there to keep the possession going for Chile. That was good work by Este and Yanez. And uh, Chile get their corner. He showed great tenacity there, Este, because that didn't look on for him at all. Well, he, he was he was uh, he's coming down his left side, and he looked as though he was in for a hard tackle. And he plays it quick with the outside of his right foot and jumps. 
So the tackle goes underneath him, and the ball stayed in touch down this left side of the pitch. And it took a defender out of the game and as well. It took a defender out of the game, and the ball went into Yanis. Contreras, who takes all the dead ball situations. Or Chile, near post corner, spectacularly headed away. Pizarro having to lay it back now, and the whistle had sounded, I think. And that looks like a yellow card again for me. Uh, well, maybe it isn't this time. Certainly ticking off. There must have been some shoving or pushing at the corner as the corner came in. And obviously he said something to the record. Well, it's Yanez and he's still uh, being spoken to as well. Mr. Wright looks quite infuriated. He dropped his wish. <laughs> A lot of people would be, the crowd would hope he'd lose it, of course. Never a problem if he got his whistle job. He's got to have a good day. I don't think he'll beat that record that I think it was George Courtney held of a World Cup match uh, a few years ago, and it's only like 85 free kicks in the match. That was two South American countries. Memory serves me right. And there's another one. Still nil-nil, Chile nil, Argentina nil. The key game in Group A, certainly for them, good dribbling skills once more here. The ball laid out wide for Yanez. Inside the area, good work from Yanez. Is this going to be the moment? Pizarro missed kicks completely. He seemed to take his eye off the ball and curses, he says. He knows that was probably the best chance that's been created. Well, it was unlucky, John. I mean, it was a super run by Yanez down that right side to the, to the byline. But it's come on Pizarro's right foot. If he comes on his left foot, I'm sure he'd have, he'd have tucked it away. Watch, super run to the byline, little flick to the back post, and it's coming onto his right foot volley. And obviously, it's not his best foot, and he virtually mistimes it completely. And he knows it, look. Yeah, he certainly does. And what he's got to do is, is, in all his spare time, he's got to go away and practice with that right foot shot. Yeah. <laughs> Although he might be into his 30s now, I'm sure he is. Four out of ten can do a lot better. That's right. Here it is again. Yanez lays over the perfect ball for him, doesn't he? Look at that. He's got a bit excited, aren't he? can't get better chances than that, John. We, in fact, uh, saw something similar in the previous match this evening where one of the Paraguayans laid on a goal absolutely superbly. Here's a chance for Argentina. Basualdo steaming up on the right-hand side. Falls over the outstretched, outstretched leg of Margas. Argentina seemed to have plenty of options then and they didn't use any of them very well. This fella Contreras is still working hard. He's had quite a good game tonight for Chile. 20 minutes left and it's 0-0. But the crowd here staying in their seats, they still hope that this is going to be the historic night on which Chile beat Argentina for the very first time in the Copa America. For the 15th attempt. That will be a free kick for Argentina, signalled by the Brazilian referee, who's been firm tonight. Sometimes the problem can be not allowing the game to flow. Well, he's a South American, Johnny. He must, he's, he's got to be able to understand South American football. I think he must. Free kick uh, to be taken by Rodriguez. And he's made his mind up what he's going to do with it. And they look for an offside verdict, it doesn't matter anyway. It's gone straight through to Toledo. And the Chilean goalkeeper really has had a very easy night. I don't think he's been tested, John. I don't think he has at all. And that is disappointing. They've been very disappointed from the Argentinians, John. I mean, Canigias hasn't done much. Here's Yanez, Kenny cuts the ball back inside that area, Zamorano tries to lay it back as well. Here's another shooting chance, and this time it's on Pizarro's right foot again. And it's gone wide. Well, at least he made a good connection there, John, and struck it quite well. well it's just that practice, hasn't he? Looks, he looks as though he's took a deflection or something, because we've got a corner out of it. Yes, good referee again to see that, it did take a deflection. And Yanez has laid over two good crosses already, and Contreras takes the latest corner for Chile. 
is this going to be effective? There's a good header. Good, firm, solid header. So Zamorano gets up so well, but he couldn't get it on the mark. He climbed well here. It's a good header, really, from that distance. Just needs to dip under the bar. Uh, coverage of the South American Championships brought to you in conjunction with Adidas. And it's nil-nil between Chile and Argentina. The top two, you would say, in Group A, although Paraguay might have something to say about that as well. They've got the points in the bag. So. And they've got a couple of games to play as well. So Paraguay might just uh, upset the apple cart here. Argentina trying to camp outside the uh, Chilean penalty area. Getting bodies forward, and that's useful because it's played into a bit of space this time. For Canigia, ball laid in. Batistuta, glancing header, it sort of skimmed off the top of his locks. And went out of play, and that's going to be a goal kick. They do have a problem in Argentina with scoring joke goals in general. I mean, uh, on Argentina football, week in, week out, we have a lot of 1-0s uh, and 1-1s. Well, looking at these players, if, if uh, these are the best forward players for Argentina, John, and I know you can have off days, don't get me wrong, uh, and also the midfield players, they're a bit disappointed. I mean, they're well organised and obviously they know exactly what they're doing, but that little bit of flair and imagination, that quality cross quality ball into the box it's just not coming no, there isn't a mario kempis or a luke there that's for sure there's no maradona John. there's no maradona that's for certain rodriguez getting involved again so chile able to bring it away and then contreras is pass intercepted played forward this time by vilches the interception on argentina's behalf is from craviotto both sides intent on giving the ball away at the moment, however, Zamorano is in possession. Something usually happens when he's there. I think they've got to try and get it out to this man, Yanez, because he looks as likely as anybody to lay a goal on. He can get into the bar line, John, that's what he can do. And any player at any level, in any part of the world, if he can get into the bar line, he's going to create chances. I think uh, one fact that's incredible, and we can go uh, dizzy on facts, but Argentina haven't actually won the Copa America since 1959. I find that staggering in view of their record in the World Cup in the finals. They first won it in 1921, the Copa America, but not since 1959, and that's uh, 32 long years they've been waiting. And this side doesn't look particularly capable at the moment because they haven't got a natural finisher, as you say. Having said that, Batistuta and Latteray did score plenty of goals between them in the league season, so maybe we, they're holding themselves back. Who knows? Canigia wins a free kick. This might be in a tricky position. If they've got, uh, if we could send someone like Ruggieri up, that this might is the danger. Position, John, we were talking about uh, early on. This one that goes to the back post. Is this gets headed down to the penalty spot? Fabian Basualdo from River Plate winning his eighth cap to take, uh, no, in fact, he's to leave the free kick to be taken by Rodriguez, winning only his second cap. Played in and uh, they looked for an offside. The whistle had sounded. Didn't turn out to be a very intelligent one. Nope. Not a lot of thought went into that. Well, no doubt uh, which side the crowd is on here. Patriotic, of course, and Yanez knocked over, beaten down by Vasquez, one of those booked in the first half. So he's walking a bit of a tightrope, although that wasn't uh, the worst challenge you've ever seen. So a free kick is always a cruise. Even so, Goikachia will have to guard now. And let's see if Chile have been working any harder on their free kicks than Argentina have. Well, Contreras has took a, at least half a dozen, John. It's about time he delivered one. They four men inside the penalty area. They're three hanging around just outside it. Pizarro's had a couple of shots in the last few minutes. Referee's still trying to get things organised. And, uh, well, 
He tried to catch Goikachir out there. That might not have looked very clever, but in fact, the goalkeeper had to get down and make the stop. The thing is, John, he, he whipped the ball onto that near post. Uh, Goikachir was off his goal and expecting it to go chip to the back post. It's that type of thing that could create a goal. Somebody has got to do something a little bit different if we are to avoid the first goal of these these championships. The ball headed away. It's not won by Pizarro, but it is by the substitute. And an important tackle won by Ruggieri, edge of the area. Here is Yanez. Tries to uh, get the ball out left to Pizarro, who have a corner kick. Fortunately, good moments these then for the home country. They're applying a lot of pressure. Yanez to float another one across here. Trying to catch the Argentinian defence off guard. Cleared once more, however, and Argentina able to bring it away. Get it out wide. It's laid forward by Franco this time. That's Astute's header to uh, nobody at all. And cleared upfield by Garrido. Margas swings the right boot rather hopefully and the Argentine defence will cope with that sort of pass all night now they look to cope against Kanijir he's got the blistering pace he's got the skills it was a good run he uh, might have kept his head down he's given Batistu to the chance and an excellent stop by Toledo that for me is the moment of the match that's a super save I mean here again at last we've seen a good run by Kanijir and he stopped and got his head up as soon as he got his head up, he saw the player who was open, that is Tuta, played the ball to him, he's in a good shooting position, and he's got a good shot in, and Toledo made a super reaction sa save off his right hand. He was going the wrong way, I fancy. Let's yes, have a look. He was, going to, he his was left. going to his left, and he stuck out the right hand, and he's palmed it round the post, and that's an excellent stop. And it justifies further your pre-match comment that this man Toledo ain't a bad goalkeeper. It's a corner kick all the same for Argentina. A year ago they were contesting the World Cup final. But here now, they try to overcome the host nation in the Copa America. And it's still nil-nil. We're into the closing stages. And the referee's uh, picking up all the coins, John. You sure of a few, Bob? <laughs> it's like you can bet your bottom dollar. That's what's happened. The chilly crowd are throwing things. The lad who's taking the corner. Spitzel. Just trying to unsettle him, it is, and there, he got a good strike on it, did Batistuta, he didn't hang around, but he was denied, and we've got a bit of bother over here. I don't know why they did. No. He's given it to a policeman, obviously, or a soldier. It's even harder up. And the referee sensibly saying, well, come on, let's get on with this game, and let's get it over with, probably. Not long to go, but there's some really stupid pushing and shoving now involving Yanez. We're not looking at it at the moment. We're seeing again this great stop from the goalkeeper. Watch this for a reaction save. That's excellent work by Patricio Toledo. And, uh, well, at long last, the referee has sorted it all out. Argentina have got their corner. It's to be hoped from Chile's point of view their concentration has not been disturbed by that incident. Here's Basualdo across the face of the area. Disappointing header, however. He had time to direct that one better than he did. Good cross from Basualdo. It was deep yes, enough. It was. And there was enough blue and white shirts around to get for someone to. But with 10 minutes to go in Santiago, it's Chile nil, Argentina nil. And if it stays that way, then Chile would regain their position at the top of Group A with five points. Paraguay would be in second position with four That's from two games, and Argentina would have three. And it's good night to Peru and Venezuela. which wouldn't surprise anybody, really. Este. Contreras. Interception made by Craviotto, the first man booked her this evening, but he's not done anything rough since then. Now Basualdo, experienced player, tries to uh, lay the ball forward for Batistuta. It's again the poor service. Yeah, that's right, John. Uh, John, as a coach, you... Obviously, if you're breaking down as much as the Argentines are breaking down, is it... Something's wrong. Either the service forward is wrong, or the position the front players are making are wrong. Uh, I think there's a little bit of each. 
I'm not impressed with the passing forward, and I'm not impressed with the positions the front players are taking out. They're not trying to get away from the defenders. No. So they've settled for a point as yeah. well. One of those occasions where they probably thought they've worked it out. Well, if we get a point apiece from this one, we can blot out Paraguay between us. But it's a very dangerous game to play. However, here's a chance, and that's good work from Batistuta. He scored! Argentina get their goal, and it was beautifully taken. It really was an excellent goal. We've just been saying that Argentina haven't really shown the appetite to score goals, and then all of a sudden, out of nothing, the Chilean crowd is silenced, and Gabriel Batistuta scores a really excellent goal, his third of these championships. He threads his way between two defenders, and right-footed, he hooks it past goalkeeper Toledo, in off the upright. Glum faces on the Chilean bench. Come on, lads. We've got to go for it now. And that has changed the entire complexion. And Batistuta is the man responsible. Yes, John, we've got to give him credit. I mean, whatever we say, at last we've seen a little bit of that individual brilliance we were talking about. He's picked the ball up. He's gone past inside, inside one defender, back across the next defender, and stuck it inside the far post. The end of a, of, a, of, a, of a difficult dribble. We're in for a very interesting last seven minutes now because Chile have really got to fill the kitchen sink at this one. It will mean now, if Argentina hold on to this lead given them by Batistuta, that uh, we'll have a tied situation at the top of Group A. Paraguay, Chile and Argentina all on four points, but Argentina and Paraguay will have only played two matches each against Chile's three. And all of a sudden, yes. Chile, the host nation, from having had two marvellous results, have been hauled back and will become third favourites. It's amazing what a goal can do to a table or to a team. It, is, it affects everything. And how many times have we seen this in football, John? A goal against the run of play. And that really has uh, upset the crowd here because uh, they can see Chile's hopes evaporating all of a sudden. They have just one game left. That's against Paraguay. And that takes on uh, in tremendous importance now. The game between Paraguay and uh, Chile. Argentina also have to play Paraguay and Peru. And it's been a typical Argentine performance again. We can criticise them all we want for their lack of ambition sometimes, but uh, so often they pop up with these 1-0 results. They don't look pretty for long spells of the game. No, they don't, John. I mean, they're, they're an easy team to criticise, let's put it that way. That was nice work. Uh, it's uh, offside, I would have thought, but uh, I think the referee has sensibly allowed play to continue. And here is Pizarro, the uh, Chilean captain. Played wide from Contreras, up towards Yanez. He's the man who's got to unlock, unlock the Argentine door, if anybody can. That's going to be too long for Zamorano. Four ball in this time from Yanez. Well, they can get down that right side any, any time. The, I mean, they must have gone down that right side at least 20 times. And every time they deliver the ball in the box, uh, there's no one getting on the back post. I mean, if Zamorano, and he can't be everywhere, can he? It needs somebody getting down that left side. Of course, Rubio uh, went off. If Pizarro was the one that you think might come through yeah. there. Well, he has been there twice, John. Yes, he has. I mean, Pizarro could have got a goal early on. He had the volley off his right foot, and then a shot, a shot from the D with his right foot. Estes pass this time, finds Contreras. Here's a chance, is maybe. Pizarro is again, and he's got movement on his left. He hits the right foot. He shot. It took a deflection, I fancy. And you can see the spectators resuming their seats. They were standing up, hoping that that was going to be the moment. Now they'd settle for a point. They really would. It's looking a bit dark for Chile now. They're a goal down. With only five minutes less than that, in fact. Contreras is corner. Here he is again, on the left foot this time, and all the shooting chances are falling to the Chilean captain. Pizarro so far unable to accept any of them. But he's getting there, give him credit for that. On the left foot, it's a good chance again. 
No, I mean, he, he made a bad connection there as well, John. I mean, he's, he's hit it, but I mean, it's well off the target. Three and a half minutes to go in the National Stadium in Santiago. Argentina leading thanks to a fine individual goal from Gabriel Batistuta, who has got three goals now in the South American Championships, the same number as Zamorano of Chile. I don't know which of the two is going to be the happier if this scoreline stays the same way. And Argentina will be absolutely delighted because they've really got to have a jail a bit on this one. Yes, they are. Unless Chile can produce a late strike. Here is their captain, Pizarro. Down the left goes Margas. Contreras. Ooh, the slip here. Good letting Kiligia. This is danger. Oh, Kiligia bowled over. Now that certainly has to be at least a yellow card. That's a professional foul. That's a professional foul by Lizardo Garrido. He gets the yellow card. It's interesting because he must have been the last defender before the goalkeeper. Yes, he was. I think in England he'd been off the park. I think he'd have been sent off yeah. in the Football League last season. And Margas is getting into bother as well. Whether he took a swipe at uh, Kanichi while he was on the floor then, I'm not sure. But the Chileans are just losing their rags a little. Well, he's running at him here, you see, and he knocks it by him, and he comes across and checks him. That's a sending off. And sticks there. his leg across him. That's a sending off offence without a doubt. But Garrido escapes with a yellow. Argentina have a free kick and they won't worry about the fact they didn't get another goal. Well, we're just happy they've wasted up a few more seconds and have this free kick. Here it is as well. The goal kick. Ahead of from Simeone. Simeone. And there's got to be some urgency about everything Chile do now. They can't hold back. They've got to go forward in numbers quickly they've got to try and prize Argentina open and really they've not done so all night Zamorano had a header from a corner a few minutes ago but really there's not been a contrived opening Pizarro's had a couple of shots from outside the area Margas is ball in is this to be it that was an important little header that Craviotto got there with the man coming in behind him Yanez corner kick the crowd, restless, frustrated, but still hopeful. But it would appear that Argentina had to preserve their record in being un unbeaten against Chile in the Copa America. Here's the header across goal, and so close. Well, he's put one in there at the near post at last, John, and he's coming low, and they've, he's flicked the ball, and he's firstly gone across the face of two or three uh, Chilean players and you've got to say why didn't they adopt that uh, earlier yeah. as a variation there it is there was a little flick on and it was Garrido trying to get in on the end of it but with a minute to go here no more than a minute left it's Chile nil Argentina one and a really vital victory this one for Argentina if they hold on and for their coach Alfio Basile and they'll see uh, this in some way as retribution for Colo Colo's defeat on Boca Juniors in the Libertadores Cup semi-final is there to be one last throw of the dice from Chile that was Mendoza, and I think that's the first time he's been mentioned in this half, and yet yes. the first quarter of an hour of the game, he looked as though he was going to be one of the stars of the match. Matthew Stewart to the goal scorer, rolling it forward, straight to Garrido. Chile have to do something very quickly now, but they've given it away. They could be caught on a break once more. Canigia loses it, but it's a throw in for Argentina. And it looks as though last season's World Cup beaten finalists are going to make this man very unhappy tonight. Arturo Salah can do They've no more than standing. Always been vulnerable, up. John. Uh, uh, Chile in, in kind of the last 20 minutes of a the game. They work so hard during the game. I think they just they get heavy legged. There was a sort of a smug look of satisfaction there on the face of the uh, Argentine coach. He looked rather pleased with life. We'll be even more pleased if they get a second. Well, it's not going to matter too much. I think that's going to be academic. Basualdo. 
That is Tutor, and now they play the possession stuff that they're very capable of doing. Until they lose it, and Chile have one last hope, maybe. Going given, though, for Argentina. There surely cannot be long left. We have moved in to time added on for injuries. The referee has already glanced at that watch of his as Garrido must hit it long. And he must hope that the referee's arm is raised and Chile, the host country, have lost out again to Argentina, the country that seems to have the uh, eye over them, the Indian eye, and I think uh, Argentina may be a little fortunate, but look how delighted they are. Well, you know, they've won the game, John, and, and really that's what, what players on the pitch to do. Uh, their performance was very ordinary, John, very, very ordinary. But they've come through it again, it's ended Chile nil, Argentina 1-0, the only goal scored by Gabriel Batistuta. Well, the National Stadium here in Santiago still throbbing after that tremendous match that finishes with Argentina taking the points, edging Chile by a goal to nil. And Don, well, what can we say? Argentina.